is a four plus one axis precision series. This is a five foot 220 ton, so way overkill for what you need. But all of my precision series brakes share the controller, the motors, the servo package, everything. It's just a matter of the, you know, how big the cylinders are. But I can demonstrate to you just how easy and reliable this is to operate. So let's say we got, let's say we got this part right here, just your classic U channel. And so it's four inches here, inch and a half, inch and a half. So if you add all those up, you get seven inches. And if you were to, if you were to cut a blank out seven inches and set a, you know, a back gauge depth of 1.5 and 1.5 and bent that part like that on the fabricator brake, your part's not going to be accurate. You know, it's going to be way too big. It's not going to fit. So now you got to cut another one and shorten everything and try it again. You might be there an hour, okay? Because the fabricator brake is, it's a good value. It's a good price, um, but it has no tools to help you get accurate parts. And so that's where the precision series comes in. So I'm going to draw this part. I'm going to show you how easy it is. And uh, I got the controller swung way around pointing that way because there's a major glare coming in. But let me go around there and I'll show All you. Right, hopefully you can see this good. I'm gonna try to keep the glare out, uh, even though you can see my reflection. Yeah, let's see. There we go. All right, so the first thing that happens is you're kind of presented with a just a baseline, a blank line with a random dimension there. You can, you can operate this like a phone, zoom in, zoom out, move things around on the screen, whatever. So we know this needs to be four inches. That's what we had it drawn as and we need our two legs. So to add a leg, boom. Add a leg on this side, get the red dot over there, boom. Now once you get, you see the dimensions on that are not accurate, once you get a dimension on there, you can just change it to the dimension that you want. Touch on the number and just start typing. There's our part. That quick, that simple, that easy. I'm gonna show you a couple quick things here, but you go bend and then bend again. Now you see how it kind of sticks the long part in? We don't want that. so. We're gonna to toggle this, whoops, we're gonna to toggle it right there. And then we're gonna say bend again. And then there's our part. Now, here is the magic of this machine, right here. You see, once it got it completely bent, it says that our blank length that we need to cut to make that part on dimension is 6.69 inches. Not seven inches, but 6.69 inches, all right? We happen to have a shear up and running here, so I'm gonna shear it off here and we're gonna come and bend it. I'm gonna show you that. So we use the same brand of controller on our shears. So I'm, all I have is some aluminum here handy. So it's, it's 80 thousandths aluminum, so around 14 gauge. Um, and we're gonna set our, uh, our X axis to 6.695, which is what, we, what the, the machine told us over there that it needed. So we're gonna hit start. Back gauge is gonna come into position and we're gonna shear it here in a second. So that's our OD80 aluminum. Let me grab the piece. We'll go bend it and check the result. All right, so we're in the graphical bending mode there. It's showing us we have a, a blank part and we have our blank cut on the shear to the perfect dimension. And on small parts like this, I got these little squaring arms, help you kind of square up the part to increase the accuracy. So we're gonna make a bend there. All right. And then you see the graphic shows us how to orient the part next. So we wanna stick it in there like that. And we know it's not gonna collide because we've done our bend simulation. Now let's check it. So we said that those legs needed to be 1.5 inches, all right? So we got that, we got this zeroed out here. I don't know if, I don't know if you can see that or not. Let me turn this around and we can get more light. Yeah, you can see that there now. So we're gonna zero this out at the bottom and put this on there. Look at that, 1.492, so eight thousandths of an inch under. So with a little bit of tweaking in the corrections on the controller, that would be like dead on. Now most of your sheet metal forming tolerances are like 30 thousandths, so that's you saw that. I mean, it took me two minutes. One part, I didn't make any extras. I didn't do anything. 
we could we could check our angles, but honestly, when when you get this height right, it means the angles are right because if the angles are open or closed, you're not going to get an accurate height on it. And then the uh, the width of it here, we can check that real quick with the with these guys. <clears throat> so let me turn that on. This was supposed to be four inches. So if you're new to press brakes and you, you know, you don't know the difference between brakes and what can do what and so forth. The, and you may, you also may not be familiar with just how precise the machine needs to be to produce a certain angle. So we're on the manual screen of this controller here and you know we have an angle set of 180 degrees and that's based on everything else material tooling it's calculating a penetration depth of 5.8987 if we change this target angle by one degree so i'm going to change that to 179 now we have 5.997 for the target. So basically one degree of change equals only a thousandth of an inch in penetration depth. So if you've got a machine that can't repeat within a thousandth of an inch at the bottom of the stroke every time, you could have every part be one degree off from each other. So to demonstrate that, I've got a tense indicator here, stare it. I'm gonna set it up over here and show you just how well this precision series machine repeats. All right, so we got our uh, stare at tense indicator zeroed out at the bottom of the stroke, and we're just gonna stroke it a couple times here. We've also added a very long stroke length to stress it even more. So we zeroed it out at the bottom of the stroke. Let's see what we get to now. One tenth of an inch. So this should just this should just be able to repeat all day long around 0 .0005 within that plus or minus. So oh, 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 oh. 